in this video I'm going to be showing you how to grow cordyceps mushrooms in jars at home. Cordyceps mushrooms are a fairly easy mushroom to grow. This is because you don't have to worry about atmospheric conditions when it comes to fruiting. You can just inoculate the rice cake and then leave the jars for six weeks and the mushrooms will just fruit straight off the cakes. So first thing we need to do is create a liquid culture solution to expand the mycelium as every jar is going to need about 5 to 10 millilitres of liquid culture for inoculation. Mix 10 grams of light malt extract with 10 grams of dextrose and then add 1 litre of warm water. Give it a stir with a spoon, make sure it's all mixed and then finally filter this mixture through a piece of muslin cloth into multiple jars. You're going to want to make sure to add a magnetic stir bar to each of your liquid culture jars because cordyceps liquid culture gets extremely thick and it needs stirred daily. And see one of my jars smashed so I had to do the whole process again. This is why I've started only using recycled jars from the supermarket for my mushroom cultivation as if you pay for expensive mason jars they just end up smashing in the pressure cooker. Inside the still air box now, it's been cleaned, sprayed down with soapy water before use and everything that got put in it got wiped with alcohol. Loosen the top of each of your jars and then assemble your liquid culture syringe and then inoculate each jar with one or two millilitres of cordyceps liquid culture. Leave your liquid culture jars in a dark place to colonize for say two or three days and then you're going to want to start placing the liquid culture jars onto a stirring plate once a day and really break up that mycelium because it's going to get very thick. In about 7 to 14 days it's going to look like this and that means you are ready to move on to the next stage. First thing we're going to do is create the substrate broth mixture and to do this you want to measure out a litre of water and then add 10 grams of light malt extract, 10 grams of nutritional yeast, 10 grams of dextrose and I like to add a spoonful of mealworms for good measure but you don't have to do this if you're a vegan or vegetarian or don't want to add insects to the mix at all.
Next, you want to measure out your brown rice in each of the jars. From my experiment, I think that less rice is better per jar because the fruits came out more evenly and they grew faster, like I would say two weeks faster than the thicker cakes which I created. So the thicker cakes took longer to colonize, longer to fruit, and a lot of the fruits came out mutated. Whereas when I used a thinner cake, they grew faster, the mushrooms appeared faster, and they were more uniform and just better looking fruit and bodies. If you wanna follow my guidance, um, you can use the calculator which is on my website that will tell you to use 10 grams of rice and 18 milliliters of broth for every 7 centimeters of diameter at the bottom of your jaw. However, you don't have to use this. You can just use the rice to broth ratio and put as much in as you like, but that's just my recommendation from what I've observed and experimented with. Put the lid on each of your jaws and also your jaws should have a little hole with micro pore tape over the top of the hole just to allow for some gas exchange. Put foil over the top and the neck of the jaw and then secure this with elastic bands. Place your jaws into the pressure cooker and sterilize for 45 minutes at 15 psi. Also, at the same time, wrap up a syringe in tin foil and place that in the pressure cooker to sterilize along with the jaws. Once everything's been sterilized, it's time to inoculate the substrate. To do this, I just place everything into a still air box, clean the still air box, wipe everything down with alcohol again, and just draw up 10 milliliters of liquid culture, and then inoculate the substrate, trying to cover as much of the substrate as possible. Cordyceps doesn't like to run and expand like say oyster mushrooms They tend to only expand slightly So you really need to cover as much of the substrate as possible when you're doing an inoculation As you can see I am doing it in a kind of circular motion and I'm just kind of doing it by eye You can see when the substrate starts to become saturated with enough liquid culture It starts to kind of shimmer in the light
I find that cordyceps is quite contaminant resistant so you can take the jar off the top of the liquid culture and just leave it open while you are doing the inoculation. Kind of makes sense because cordyceps grows on insects and insects aren't exactly the cleanest of creatures on planet earth in fact they're covered in bacteria so not surprised that it doesn't cause contamination if you are not performing the best sterile technique while you are doing the inoculation Once the inoculation is finished, you should put all of your jars in a dark place for about two or three days. While you are waiting, you should build yourself a little fruiting chamber like this. All this is is a box and then I have wrapped LED light strips around the box and then I have a timer which puts the light strips on a 12-12 cycle. The best tip I can give you for the fruiting box is to place it away from any windows so you don't want any sunlight hitting this box because it will create a greenhouse effect and the temperature will skyrocket to like 28 degrees. That box needs to stay between 15 and 18 degrees C for the mushrooms to grow. After a couple of days in the dark, the substrate will start to look like this. It will fluff up a little bit and this means it is ready to be placed into fruiting conditions. So just take all your jars, place it into the fruiting box and then just leave it alone. After around two or three weeks, your substrate will start to look like this. It will grow very orange. This is perfectly fine. After a further two weeks, the substrate will start to stain red and you might start to see a little bit of pinning. Again, just leave it. And then at around six weeks, you'll start to see proper cordyceps mushrooms growing up. And you just want to leave these until they get a bulbous head on the end and then it's time to harvest. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. As always, there's a full written post of this video on my website. If you want to go over to that, I'll put it in the description below. And in the next video, I'm going to be doing cordyceps again, but we're going to be looking at how to grow cordyceps using bulk bins without the jaws. As you can see here, bulk bins seem to give you some really good fruits. Some of them are far bigger than the ones that have come out of the jars. So if you're interested in that, then subscribe and you'll get an alert when that video is out.